Welcome to the Ty and Rye, the Finance Guys podcast, covering weekly investment news, important financial topics, and expert interviews. We want to help you become more knowledgeable about the financial world around you. This is not an offer to sell you anything, and remember, past performance doesn't indicate future results. Now your hosts, Ty Hansen and Ryan Robertson. Hello, and welcome. New episode of Ty and Ryan. Tyler Hansen. Looking good yes, today. Sir. Thank you. I'm just keeping up with you, bud. I uh, doubt that. <laughs> Whatever. You're devilishly handsome. Mm, got to get a good podcast today. Very, oh. very excited about this one. So excited. Yeah. And for the record, I, I do want to put this out there. This idea of what we're going to bring out in the next couple of podcasts, all Ryan's idea. 100% you, dude. Yeah, all you came from the uh, the Love it. podcast we did on investment philosophies. You started talking about some of these, uh, particularly the one today. I'm like, ah, oh, it's yep. a podcast in and of itself. We really need to deep do a deep dive into this one because it has deep so dives. many implications for today. Oh, it's it's, it's great, and, and, and this is what I love is the more that that you've been like diving into some of the research and data, and I'm like. The nuggets that you've got here that we're going to go through, mm-hmm. like, I, I don't think it'll be boring to literally go through some of these nuggets here. Like, it's just so, because I mean, I, I, I know a lot about this information and I didn't even remember all these pieces of data and it's like, holy it crap. is funny. This is cool. This is really cool. When you go back and look at it, you're like, oh, I kind of forgot that. Or even stuff you're like, oh, I didn't know that. Because, yeah. you know, just as you move forward in time. There's just things that get lost and forgotten. And what do they say about those that don't yeah. understand the past, Ty? It tends to bite you in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way of putting it. That's one way to put it. <laughs> That's one way of putting it. Those usually they say don't remember. Usually, yeah. usually they say those that don't remember the past are doomed to repeat it. Repeat it. Yeah. Or That's get it. bit Not in ass. the ass. Yep. Or get bit in the ass. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. With Gordon so, Ramsay. You know, I'm the history buff here. Uh, there was always this uh, idea that if you're not bringing any of that history forward as relevant to now, right, sort of useless. What's the point? Exactly. So as we talk about this, everybody think about it in terms of how that means, uh, what that means for today. And we are right. talking about the dot-com bubble of the yes. 90s. And into the early late 2000s. Late 90s, early to a change, you know, turnover of the millennium. Yeah. So, again, coming back to this idea. So, this is going to be a um, little mini series. Yeah. The next few episodes we're going to do, we're going to actually. So, we've already identified four for sure that we're going to do, and maybe a couple more. And then, and then maybe we'll even, I think we may even end up doing a wrap up episode completely dedicated to this, uh, the, mm-hmm. coming back to this overarching concept. And the idea is that, like, these waves come and go, these cycles come and go, and it's funny that it's same story, different day. Yep. But it's also a different underlying. T- so dot com, right? Which we're, we're going to dive in today. The Great Recession, which really was a real estate crash of 08. Yeah, and you can throw into that. You can throw into that as idea of derivatives, although a yeah, d- derivatives. Yeah, but, but oh yeah, mar- mortgage-backed securities, but yep. definitely driven by the idea of real estate. R- yes, no. In fact, I'm I'm so glad you said that because that that's because yeah, it's like, well, what if you know was real estate really that speculative? You know that the fuel really the, the you know the fuel in the engine for that that crash was mortgage-backed securities and those derivatives. Yeah. You're absolutely right. And we'll yeah. talk about that. Um, you know, there's been different times that gold, the gold rush, has been an issue. Mm-hmm. Um, Literal and, and gold rushes and investing gold rushes. And investing gold rushes. That's right. Yeah. Literally and figuratively. Yeah. Uh, and, and then the last one, obviously, well, cannabis stocks, right? Goodness gracious, again. And then and then cryptos, right? So it's like, okay, this is happening right now. Yeah. And again, same story, different day. Mm-hmm. It's just mind-blowing. Anyway, so as we got talking about this, Ryan and, you know, Ryan... He's kind of started putting. He's like, "Yeah, dude, this is this is exactly what we want to do. This is perfect. Let's go through these. Let's break these down." So today, dot com. Yeah, right. So let, let, talk about some of the background here. Uh, some dates. We're really talking 
basically between say 95 and about 2002. Yeah. And 2002 is fairly definitive because that's sort of the very end basement of that uh, the pop in the bubble. But you right. could argue, oh, it started earlier than that, whatever. But we're really talking about that mid part of the 90s through that late part of the 90s and the early 2000s. So here's right. here's some numbers, Ty, that, you know, as you really yeah. think about it, it, it really kind of blows your mind. So let's think about this. In the, the nugget. Now, all of these companies we're talking about, these dot-com, and we're talking about dot-com. They're internet companies. They're based yeah, I on love, the internet. I love you've got – so we definitely need to go through some of these before because, yeah. again, m- most of I remember, but there are a couple of these that I forgot about. Yeah, like the companies that just came – comical. Ah, oh, they're terrible. Yes. I know. They're so funny. Oh, so but see, the bad. thing is, so – you know, the internet starts to round into form, right? It's not rounding into form. It's beginning at this time. So, uh, you know, companies are obviously starting to yeah. scramble for, oh, we can build a company really fast. Yep. We can build a brand really fast. We can yep. get our marketing and advertising out there. And we can have a real company with a whole lot less, right, than what it would take to do these brick and mortar companies that have been around for, you know, 10, 20, right. 30, 100 years. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you think about like what the what the barrier. Yeah, I mean, think about the barriers to entry for for business was yeah. so much different in the '60s, '70s, '80s, you know, early '90s. And then, yeah, exactly. Now it's like, hey, the sky's the limit. You don't even need a, you know, you don't need anything. Well, right? yeah, the, the, the whole country is you, you your build customer a, base. You build a website. <laughs> yeah, you build a website. Right. Yeah. Right. Those won't last very long. So now no. all of these companies are listed on the NASDAQ, which, again, we hear about all the time. Yep. You know, that's that's just one of those uh, yep. exchanges that's very common. So when I talk about these numbers, we're really talking about the NASDAQ. So think about yeah. this. In 1995, the NASDAQ was around 995, 990, 995. Pick whatever day right. you want during right. that time frame. Just right. under 1,000. And with all of these companies coming in, it peaked... In 2002, March 2002, or sorry, no, it peaked in March 2000 at 5,048. So we're talking like five years. Four, yeah. (laughs) And it's increasing basically 400%. 400%. It's almost doubling every year. Talk about FOMO. I can't even like, imagine. I'm not. Yeah. You yeah. know, I wasn't old enough to be investing at the time. I was still quite a youngster. I was out of high school, but well, uh, just barely. Yeah, I, I had just um, so as 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 I, at the tail end, I had just finished serving uh, a Latter Day Mormon mission, right, LDS mission, and I was just starting to get back because I'd been in part of the real estate industry right before my mission came home started getting back into it and like all of this is like starting to erode. You know yes. I mean? So it's just, it's crazy. Yeah. So it peaks at 5,048. Now this is March yeah. of 2000. So the thing that characterized this huge growth and bubble essentially you can characterize no better than just FOMO, this fear of missing yeah. out. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Right. Yep. Cause they, I remember Buffett talking about this, after it he didn't invest yeah. any money into any of these dot-com companies because his biggest thing yeah. was is like i didn't understand their business model i didn't yeah. know what they did so if i don't understand it, i'm not going to do it but so right. many people just funneled their money to it yeah so this is for right. this is kind of for you to kind of put into this what are the main sort of characteristics that drove people no, no, I shouldn't say drove. What were they missing in these companies that they should have picked up on if they were investing this way? What were they missing? Well, well I mean, it's, it's, like, it, I mean, it's obviously it's it, obvious, but let's talk about that. I no, it, it's a great point. Well, I just the whole reason I keep laughing, and, and, and I'm, I'm I'm gonna I want to I want to make this very 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 clear. <laughs> people investing in cryptos, I don't think you're dumb. I don't. I think there's something there. And yeah. we'll talk about crypto specifically. We already did. We already did a podcast about it. We're gonna but we're gonna we're gonna do it again because of with this mini series, right? Yeah. But it's the same concept where it's like there's nothing there. Like there is no I mean again, so I, I love I and we've talked about this term a lot, and we will talk about this so much more. Speculation, right? Mm-hmm. Speculation 
is, and you can quantify speculation, right? In fact, I love it. We've got a little note here about PE, and I want to talk yeah. about funny things that you've noted here in your historical historian data gathering <laughs> that is so applicable even to today. It's just, it, it just, I'm, that's why I keep laughing. This is so comical. Uh, but like we, you can look at price to earnings, right? And, and the greater that gap, right, between price to earnings, right, like what it's trading at, which is the stock price, mm-hmm. to what the actual earnings of that what, of that underlying company are, right? Yeah. Where do earnings come from? <laughs> why, why are the earnings there? So, okay, like to answer your question, I'll ask you a question. What? Where does Nike get its earnings from? Yeah. Well, actually, Nike. Where? Nike just came out with its report just barely, and uh, it, it increased and, its and, sales. Right, based upon Jordan, <laughs> yes. Michael Jordan, uh, uh, it was like fifty percent increase in sales. Right. So okay. yeah, they, like they there's have something, actual there's, products yes. that they're selling. The, yeah, I love. I run a. I, we've talked about marathoning. I love marathoning, and I my first fifty miler I ever did, like ultra marathon. I wore Nikes. I love Nike. Yeah. They, they they run well. So okay, so there's something there. So yeah, coming back to your question, like. There's there's nothing there. There are literally for some of these companies there was literally like well, a, some it was con, it was conceptual. You're saying nothing, and you are literally meaning nothing. I mean we are we are honestly talking yeah. about price to earnings ratios that are zero because yeah, there's no there are no earnings. There are yeah. no <laughs> earnings, right? right? These companies are literally built well, on an idea. <laughs> think about think about that. Like, <laughs> what is Dogecoin? <laughs> Well, yeah. I mean, we can it was made up as a joke. That. It's like it was made up as a really joke, was. right? No, yeah, it really and, was. And I actually, I actually just saw a, a coin that came out the other day. I'm gonna, I'll look it up before we do that. And I can't remember what the name of it was, but it literally is just some random person's like, here's my, here's the newest coin, right? It's like just some person made it up. Yeah. Anyways, okay. So I don't want to get off on tangent, but okay. Uh, well, one thought though with this is, it's interesting because again, we're. we're and I love the way you approach this. This is why I think that this this idea is so powerful, and I love the way you formed it. Is is let's look at history and see if history is repeating itself, right? Uh, there was this really speculative market with very low interest rates. Yeah, I was, gonna, I was just going to say that interest rates. And 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 like I just was talking about, and price to earnings were were way. I mean, even companies that were that did technically have some book value earnings. Yeah, we'll talk about those. They were they were like the prices were so much higher than what they truly were earning. Wild. And again, w- the wild the, the wider the PE ratio, right? That, that meaning that the bigger that spread of real what it's trading at versus what it really is making. Every the higher that is, I all, that's why I start to call the speculative region, right? Yeah. And we research that all. I research that almost every mm-hmm. day when I'm looking and investing. So, so okay, what does today's market look like? We have insanely low interest rates, right? We've talked about inflation again because rates are so low and they've got to go back up and there's yeah. a lot of inflation scare on that. And PE is way out of whack. Yeah. So, yep. Okay, so anyways, but that's, so, that's what we were seeing back then. So then that's the thing. So we start talking about the internet coming around and it's this tool now that everybody can sort of build these business models around. And even brick and mortar businesses are realizing, hey, this is a, a really cool yep. component we can add to our existing model and so you have all these little companies that are that are popping up and then they just start some of them are just brand new and some of them they're buying right, right. to to include into their overall uh business model so yeah a couple other numbers here that i just fascinated by uh first yeah. one in 1999 so the nasdaq increases 85.9 percent in one year Let's just keep that in Jeez. mind. The S and P only rose nineteen point five percent that which, same year. Which, which, which again, it's like. So we're not talking about any of these Nasdaq companies are on yeah. the S and P five hundred, right? Yeah. Well, think about that. Like, yeah, well, the, the interesting thing about this too is is S and P five hundred today has a lot of tech component to it. Yeah, yeah. Back then, back then there was a lot more separation of the different market sectors, right? Yeah. S and P really was just truly like that kind of that that grouping of a wide spread of the entire market. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. So in that year that it but, only went up nineteen yeah. and a half. This is what I found oh, hold insane. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, sorry. You finished your thought. I want to come back to this. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. This is what I found insane. 
in that year where the Nasdaq went up 85.9 and the S&P went up 19.5, the S&P had more losing stocks than yeah. it did gaining stocks, meaning those yeah. that are losing versus yeah. those that are gaining, yeah. because people were just drawing their money out of these S&P companies and funneling it into the Nasdaq because the S&P right. was slow. It was slow. 19.5% still on the, yeah. the S&P that year, but they're Which, like, not fast enough. Yep. Again, that's that's FOMO, FOMO tends to be... And Buffett's talked about this too. I've seen a lot of, um, you know, really good um, Timberman. There's a lot of different good analysts that I read and things like that. And there's always this idea of like understanding when there's greed versus fear, right? Yeah. And, and 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 you have actually opportunity, more opportunity when there's greed. Uh, sorry, sorry, when there's fear versus greed. And yeah, that's exactly what it is. Um, and, and again, there's because I I keep wanting to pull back and just understand the overarching. What is, what can we learn from all of us? Mm-hmm. What can we learn from the past? What can we learn from today, right, to apply today? If you were to take 19.5% and plug that into anybody's financial plan, right, because we, we do financial planning, right? We do money management. We do all these things, right? Like 19.5% pretty much for anybody. If you build that into your plan, I'm not saying you're going you're gonna to have a 19.5% return every year. But that's a really good year. Like if yeah. you are doing things the right way, yeah. holy crap, your plan is projecting in a really good way to where you're going to be just fine in retirement. You're going to be in really good shape at the latter half of your, you know part of your yeah. your life, right? Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, the fact I, I know I love that you pulled that out. That people were literally fleeing the market in droves because of the underperforming nineteen and a half percent. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, Oh, this is this is bonkers. And it's that old saying, Ty. You know the old saying. I do. Pigs get fat, hogs get slaughtered. Hogs get slaughtered. That's I right. had someone tell me that. And it makes sense. It really does. It's just one of those things where, where everybody yeah. is going, Oh my gosh, my S and P investment, whatever, is just not yeah. gaining enough. Yeah. Look at the NASDAQ. I'm losing. So what's amazing, though, is that in 1999, that's that growth. So you can imagine everybody in the NASDAQ or in that those dot-com companies in 99 come 2000, they're like, I can't get out of this. I, right. What if it goes up more? What if it does another 80% this year? It yeah. could. I yeah. got to stay in. Well, yeah. too bad. Now you have things like, you know, Japanese recession, which is a pretty big recession right. starts. Well, it starts to shake things a little bit where you got a lot of tech companies that are being... Yep. Right. Coming from that uh, that area of the world, and then you start throwing into things like there's a failed merger with Yahoo and eBay, yeah. which was really big at the time, because those were really right. two like uh, big players in that dot com world. And right. And then there were a handful of articles, and this is where it kind of comes back to this point that we're starting to talk about how these dot com companies were just burning through cash, investment oh. capital. Yeah, because they yeah. had no earnings, they weren't making money. All they were right. trying to do was market, right. advertise, build their brand, and right. hopefully, the earnings will come. And as that yep. started to happen in March of two thousand, it just started to go down and down and down, and it right. went all the way until October two thousand two. Right, sprinkled in there, of course, September eleventh, which was a big right. deal obviously. Right. Right. But in October 4th, 2002, the Nasdaq went down to 1,139, which is a 77% 77% drop. That is the epitome of a bubble burst. And like that literally is a bubble burst. What's amazing about that are the amount of companies that just went bankrupt. Because it's not like yeah. they just lost their value and they got a scrape to get back. It's like, nope, they're done. They are gone. Yeah. They're out like of the equation. Literally, they're, yeah, like, and, and I've had people ask me that before. They're like, well, wait, what, what, like, what happens? Can, like, an ETF go, like, not bankrupt, but can they go to, like, what, what, can, what's the, what can happen? I literally have had people ask me that before, right? Because it's kind of an interesting concept when you think about it. It's like, well, I invested in the stock and 
you know, I, I, I'm okay. I, I can take the risk of the stock going up and down. I'll, I'll okay with the fluctuation, but it's like, well, wait, what can happen? It's like, no, like literally that can go to zero, mm. right? Your, your valuation can be worth zero, right? Meaning yeah. you put in 50 grand, your 50 grand is now zero. Like, like that really is something that can, or, or even too, if they file for bankruptcy, guess who's the lowest on the totem pole when it comes to like corporate restructuring? Yeah. The lowest on the totem pole is common stockholder, like the common equity holders, yep. right? Like you're you're very low on the pecking order. Yeah. Um, I, I want to come back to one last thought you said too, because this is so interesting. Where, so not only like when you look at the Japanese recession and things like that that were going on globally, there are so many similarities to what happened with with Japan's um, economy failing, and they're still trying to. Re- they've, they I mean, really that took are. a long time. Yeah. Oh man, it's it's crazy. And a, a big part of that too was what they ended up doing with their with their interest rates, right? And things that were happening in their economy. And so again, it's like we're playing with the same type of fire in our. I'm not saying I'm not saying Japan's what happened in Japan is going to happen to us, right? Because luckily, our, we've got a we've got a pretty robust GDP. We've got a pretty strong economy. Mm-hmm. And as much as it, it, we could debate all day long, you know the 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 economic powerhouse that is america like that there, there's a lot that can be debated right For there sure. right in today in today's economy but we're still big enough strong enough that what we're doing with our interest rates like we're weathering that okay yeah. we really are but what i but again so just keep that in mind as we're going through this 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 mini series right is things that demolished complete country economic systems right another country's complete economic system same things are happening here in America, right? And it completely, I mean, that was a piece of and a part of and, and repercussions from the dot-com bubble bursting. Yeah. Right, so. And see, the, the worst yeah. part about these sort of bubbles is this. When those bubbles start to go up, right, who are the general main players in that? It is not yeah. your average investor. It no. is not your average person. It is not your average account. It is right. the big players who see right. some of that. They're getting ahead of it, and they're watching it go up. They're the ones who are in there all the t- all the time, right, yeah. at the beginning. And then yeah. it starts to get up to this real, like, flexion point where it's like be- right. where it becomes widespread. Everybody right. knows about it. Kind of what happened to Bitcoin earlier this year. Uh, or, yeah. uh, cryptos this or earlier this year. Well, and, and everybody knew about it. And meme stocks, yes. right? Yes. Sa- same thing. It's like... A lot of that, again, speculation is is built on the back, not of the company, not of the, not of, again, Nike. When you're buying into Nike, you're buying in on this foundation of products being sold. Yeah, right. Dot, dot coms, cryptos, the meme stocks, you're buying on the backs of other speculators. Yes. So they, like, that yeah. builds up that mountain. And as it gets closer to that top, people who are kind of in the know or understanding yeah. you start to see it yep. peter out it starts to wane they start going okay speculation time is over absolutely let's cash in and right everybody who kind of got in late are generally the ones that are holding the bag when it starts to go down. right right almost every I mean, time well well, even then, too. I mean, even if you even if you bought in, like, I mean, think about that. You you could have a year, six months, a year, year and a half, where you're kind of buying in and you're still capturing you're part still of that upswing. It. Yep. But yeah, it's like again, depending on that level of speculation, and again, greed, mm-hmm. right? And if you, you get caught you, in that downward trend, yeah, how hard is it to actually sell? See, sometimes we well, get lured into the security that oh, I can just sell yes. it whenever. Yeah. Well, exactly. if there's a real run on this, you do not know when that order is going to be actually executed, and, and it could be 10, 15, 20% below what you wanted it to be because easily. that was the soonest well, time they could do it. Well, and you bring up a great point, and I want to stress that too, just a, like, a, a, like a function in, in the stock market, in the markets, right? People yeah. are like, oh, I can just set a stop loss. Right. Like, okay, that, that's, that's fine. But you people need to understand a stop loss does not guarantee yeah. if you say, okay, I want, I want to make sure this thing sells at 50. Well, guess yeah. what? If, if you don't get executed until 35, mm-hmm. right? Too bad. Yeah. You just and, lost that. And that's happened. Right? And, and, and at the time, that was a big yeah. deal 
Yeah. Because there has to be something going on to actually execute those orders, well, and it's done in order. Right. I, the other thing, too, again, I don't want to get ahead of myself or ahead of what we're wanting to accomplish here. <laughs> Go ahead, but what was interesting about these? Can I, yeah, please? get ahead. <laughs> this is your baby, so you stop me if you want me to. <laughs> What's interesting, too, is think about this. These were these were a lot of these were IPOs, right? Initial public offerings, and so they're hitting yeah, the markets yeah, and they're yeah. trading. IPOs um, typically, you know, to, and and there's been changes to how IPOs are produced, but usually you have to hold. Like if you're part of the IPO, well, a most most retail like common man or woman investors aren't able to participate in the IPOs, right? You get you kind of get the second wave. Yeah. Um, but it, what's interesting about this, and this is key here, is these were still initial public offerings through, you know, regulated with the SEC before they started trading, yeah. right? They were going public. But you actually had something that, 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 that was born into a, a secondary exchange, right? NASDAQ, S&P 500, Russell, right? Like you've, or, uh, Chicago Board of Exchange. Like there's different places you can actually go to sell your, your stocks. Right. Crypto doesn't have an exchange. And... and- doesn't have any regulation. It doesn't have any regulation. So again, I just I, like as we look at speculation, right? Th- these at le- back in the dot com age, at least there was a, technically a secondary market. Even though, even though overnight, I mean, and that's the thing. I guess that's a good point too to think about. Just because you have a secondary market doesn't mean you're going to be able to get out, right? Because some of these companies, they were gone. Yeah, but. But right as as history kind of repeats itself, I just think that's kind of interesting to kind of see that now, where it's like, man, like these were speculative, but they at least kind of were following some of the more conventional. Yeah. Um, well, and, and and in this, like, there's companies that made it through because they they had a legitimate yeah. business model that was yeah. working, right? right? And we'll know them. Amazon obviously is one of them. Yeah. Right, yeah. but what's crazy about it is you look at some of their numbers. Right, they had their IPO in '97, ten dollars a Amazon share, did, yeah, yeah, and it rose to a hundred dollars a share, and then because you know, rising tides or lowering tides, some, something about like water skiing with boats. I don't know something like tides rising tides boats raises all boats. Opposite all is true. Skiers. It goes back down to yeah. ten dollars a share. Yeah. Right there in the end of 2001, and they just have to claw their way back to where, you know, that's $3,500 yeah. a share. But uh, right. they made it through eBay, kind of the same story. And then right. Priceline is another real winner that came out of that. So, you know, as we've talked about these, you know, these companies all were going in the right direction in that they were utilizing right. this new technology of the internet and this new economy idea. Right. But this growing pain that occurred with this dot com just obliterated uh i don't know how many people probably oh lost yeah job i mean some of these well, companies will talk about the number of jobs that were lost and money yeah, that was lost is yeah. so crazy so crazy well and you know what's interesting about this too is you know we're going to do another episode about the recession great recession of 08 right about these derivatives and about um, you know, the housing crisis, right? Yeah. And you know, what's funny is <laughs> this, this concept of, of greed, of, of FOMO, of I got to buy this thing right now that's going to shoot through the roof. When this blows up, when does the real estate market all of a sudden start to just ramp up? Mm-hmm. About 2003, 2004. Yeah. Right. And money started to exit about- the markets. Yep, and they're like, "Whoa, where else are we gonna go?" Equity equities are so bad, and mm-hmm. real estate's the wave of the future. You gotta have a tangible asset, right? Because, and then, in fact, that's isn't that funny? Think about that. Think about this. People, people left like they're like, "Well, yeah, hell, I invested in Pets dot com, which literally had nothing, right? <laughs> right? There was like literally hey, nothing don't, don't there." Don't get ahead of yourself. This Pets dot com is really good. Okay, <laughs> it's really that is good. a good one. But, but, but using that as an example, people went from this extreme of like investing speculatively in something that had literally no intrinsic value. To, well, real estate has intrinsic value. Let's pump that. Uh, let's pump that thing up. Just, just start connecting the dots. This is going to be sort of the last one that we'll do as a foreshadowing for yeah. everybody. Connect the dots. Dot com, real estate, gold, yeah. crypto, and you can start to connect these dots right. to time, right. to time, to time. It's almost as if there is somebody behind the curtain. Yep. Just. 
tweaking everything back. Okay, we need a new FOMO investment. What's, well, right? What's the new? What's the new one? Here's well, the new one because there, there, there's a there's a uh, 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 whatever you call it uh, yeah. vacuum. There's a vacuum yeah. of this, and it's like, okay, well, who's gonna fill that spot? Right now, we got it's it. So crazy! It is so so crazy. Okay, now, um, I can I jump in for one second? Yes. I wanna, there's there's a concept here before we. I don't know. Do you want to go into the, the flops? <laughs> we'll do the flops that, right at the end. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. There is something that is uh, – we, we try – you and I try really hard to not be so uh, so much on a soapbox of this is the worst thing ever right, or this right. is the best thing ever. We, we, we try very hard to be very um, – Somewhat objective. objective. Yeah. Somewhat objective, right. Uh, and this is just purely educational, right? Um, and so, so I like to see oh, some interesting – Things here that that, that were like so 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 my point with that is that did all dot com go away? Did the internet go away? Right. No. No, no, it didn't. It did not. I mean, you just talked about Amazon, right? eBay, Priceline. These things didn't go away. And so so the idea is that like you, you know over time things will slowly good technology, good ideas, sound investments will will they will come into the marketplace and they will stay, mm-hmm. right? I mean, look at how Amazon's been the last five ten years, right? I mean, yeah. there's a reason why it's such a big part of the S and P 500. Yeah. But my point is this: is 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 it's it's understanding the life cycle where you're at in the life cycle of those investments. Oh, that speculation. Right. Yep. And and it's fine to it's fine to utilize that if you want to make money on that. That's fine. It is. But you got to realize where are we at in that life cycle. And where does it and fit yes, in your portfolio? Right. Exactly. Because. Uh, in fact, it's so funny because I've got th- four or five clients that keep coming into my mind, right, who, who I've had conversations with who their retirement is fine. They're going to be okay. But they were decimated in the dot-com bubble bursting, yeah. right? Like, yeah. like I've, seen, I've seen their numbers. Like, like we're talking millions of dollars almost all gone. Yeah. And, and, and think about that. It's like, man, even, even if you had taken 50% less risk, how much more money they would have had today. And it's like – so, but again – just because something is speculative and crazy doesn't mean that it's it's Just, bad. And I think yeah, that's or useless, that, right? That, or useless. And that's I think what's so dangerous with some of the speculation is that it's like it's there is some it's fundamental value. Yeah. yeah, there is something there, right? It will be good. But but when you're in that early wave and you don't know whether or not it's gonna pop or not, it's like, oh man. If, especially too, if you're putting more than five or ten percent of your portfolio at risk to take that yeah. to take on those risks, to be the Lewis and Clark of the of the <laughs> the the cryptocurrency, you know, the Kanye West, the Kanye West. Oh my gosh, it's just it's mind blowing. But anyways, okay. So here come the flops. So there's here come the flops. Yeah. Like these yeah, are the yeah, ones yeah. that yeah. hopefully, uh, if you, you would have avoided. My favorite though is Pets.com. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's my favorite one. It's so. I mean, funny. L- just listen to this. So November 9th, two thousand. Pets.com. Yeah. So November 9, 2000, right? Uh-huh. It, the, the, the bubble right. has already started to deflate. They went out of business nine months after they had <laughs> completed their IPO. Nine oh. months. They started yeah. and stopped in nine months. Right. They lost $147 million in nine months. Oh, my gosh. And it was an online store to sell pet supplies. Yeah. It is just boggles my mind. Nine right. months. Right. Yeah. Uh, and I actually like, kind of remember that at the time. Right. Even though I wasn't really into most of this, I remember this thing about pets.com. <laughs> right. Exactly. No, I I know of people who have owned pets.com oh. and it, it's so funny too to think about that. Like like we actually have a small a small the portion of our portfolio in Chewy.com, which is the exact in what? same concept. Chewy. Chewy.com. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and Chewy, right? We, we actually own some Chewy. And it's it's so funny because it's see, like yeah, same it's concept. Just, but, it, but but hey, guess what? The, the markets have worked out their, the, you know, it's figured you say, it out, right? They, it's not, they know how to build these companies now yes, the right way. They build a right? foundation. They got a better plan. Nine months. Nine months. One hundred forty-seven million dollars in nine months. So here's the biggest uh, one. The next one, Webvan. <laughs> Great name Web too. Van. Webvan. Yeah. Grocery delivery that service. That doesn't sound sketchy, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's wow. it for? Gro- gro- okay, good. Groceries. 
groceries. It's not, not like, they're, it's not they're like not a kid transportation system. <laughs> a what? Kids. You just kid hire them. We'll use our van. It was, it was the predecessor to, to Uber. It was, it was the, the predecessor we'll for Uber. We'll have candy Uber, in Uber there, for, don't worry. For kids. <laughs> Oh, man. Grocery delivery service. <laughs> November 99 is their IPO. They raised $375 million. Shares wow. valued at $30. That put them up wow. at $1.2 billion. Wow. Valued. So, uh, oh, wow. That's so crazy. they started to use this initial capital to build yeah. warehouses and just to, to expand. <laughs> Shares fell to six cents in July oh, 2001. Gosh. Bonkers. And look at that. They laid off 2,000 employees. Wow. Once the investors realized that they burned through so much cash without making any money. Webvan, right. baby. Right. I mean, that is, it went from $30 a share at $1.2 billion to crazy. $0.06. Cents. See, this is what this is why this is like again. As we started going through this, like when you started pulling all this information, and we started, you, you know, because again, this is this is I love this. This is your baby, man, and it's such a great <laughs> idea. When I started going through some of the stuff with you, I'm like, holy crap! Like I'm totally remembering all of these things, and it's been a while since I forgot. But yeah, like it is mind boggling how so many of these things just imploded like that. Well, like, some of these numbers just drive me bonkers. Like, look at this next one with eToys. Yeah, eToys gets up to a value of eighty four dollars and thirty five cents. October ninety nine. Yeah. Sixteen yeah. months later, sixteen months later, it was warned. It warned the company was, warned its yeah. investors its stock could be uh, worthless. worthless. I mean, can you imagine getting that quarterly meeting? Hey guys, we got the report. Wow. And uh, just yeah. so you know, it's likely that your uh, wow. your your ownership is worthless now. It's worthless. Just exactly. a warning. This this globe one is really good too. Wow, uh, the Six, globe, right? Wow. Yeah, and this is yeah. just a this is just a create your own web page thing, the with which, the globe, which, which is which is funny. Again, again, this is what's so funny is is and and this is kind of the idea. It's it's like it's understanding what phase of this cycle you're in because these same type of companies exist right now and they're actually doing really yeah. well. So look at this one. I I I, I can't even fathom this that. Its IPO was November 13, wow. 98, and it jumped 600%, uh, 600% on its first day from wow. $9 to $97. Wow. And then settled at 63 at the end of the day on its first day. On its, on its initial Look, what's day, happening? Yeah. Holy Right? God, Market cap, $842 million, And then two years later, October or August 2001. <laughs> delisted. Delisted on the NASDAQ, <laughs> failing to stay above $1. Wow. wow. And then that best name so on here crazy. is the last one, flues.com. <laughs> Flues. <laughs> now, let's think about this for two seconds. Flues.com oh. sold online currency that could be used instead of credit cards. Huh. Interesting. What? Interesting. They raised $35 million, spent $8 million on their <laughs> ad <laughs> campaign, and then it went oh. bankrupt two years later after it opened. And wow. I read an article that talked about how there were corporations that were using flus uh-huh. as a way <laughs> to like give bonuses to employees. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh. We flus. We love, yeah. Who is coming up with that name? Just the name alone. Flues I know. is like a loser. We, we, we want to show you how much we love and appreciate you. We're gonna give you some flus. <laughs> <laughs> what do I use it on? Well, any well, it's online uh, stuff. Online stuff. You can use it instead uh, of credit cards. So you can start getting your pet, your pet food for your dog yeah. from Pets.com. Just flus.com. Oh um, man! I mean, the wreckage that came out of that. You know, and you're right. It. Yeah. It, one second. I'm gonna about to sneeze. Hold on. Oh. Oh, you're good. <laughs> bless you. God bless we'll you. We'll just cut that out. Don't worry. But no, the, let's leave the, the thing like that's it. amazing is the wreckage that comes out of this thing. Um, yeah, and, and and honestly, how many people were involved with it? It was it yeah. touched just about every American. Well, that had money and this in, is in what, the investment world. Exactly, it, and that's the thing is is again this kind of this element of greed and and FOMO and and wanting to jump on this bandwagon. It's like again, like it, it lots of people were were devastated from this. So so I mean, we're laughing and we're we're kind of yeah, you know right. hindsight's twenty twenty. 
but at the end of the day, it's like I, I think that's kind of why we why we're so uh, you and I are so there's we're, we're laughing. We're like this is intense because that's the whole point of this mini series. Yeah, yeah. Is wh- come on, like we've got to understand this just keeps happening. Yep. Right. There's always this going cycle, to be something. There is all, and I love it. I love we kind of keep going back to this idea of of. If, is it a banner ad, right? <laughs> That's such is a good a one. Is it a banner ad? It's such a good one. Is, is it a banner ad, right? And that was the thing. Is there banners? Yeah. Are, are you getting is there emails? Ban- are there are banners? you getting emails yeah. and texts about it? Yes, right? The, from random sources, you're like, where the hell? The thing about that, like in, in the early 2000s, right? When we write for the dot-com bubble burst, it was, the burst, this whole idea was like uh, the pop-ups, right? And the banners, right? And everybody was like, oh, yeah. Oh, no. So like if you annoying. click the wrong thing, all of a sudden, like your whole computer screen would be like 85. Yeah, you're like caught in this like, like, cycle. Like, like, yeah. I can't get out of it. I close oh, this I when another one comes up. Yeah. And, 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 and it was these, yeah, it was these, these, you know, investing in these companies. It's like, well, guess what? Like I'm seeing the same thing for cryptos. It's like. It is. If you're scrolling through uh, Facebook or Instagram and you see yeah. an advertisement for something has to do with investing. Yes. Yes. Initially go, huh. Huh. Ty and Rice said something about that. I don't think I should put 83% of my (laughs) retirement dollars, which I'm going to retire in the next two to five years. Uh I probably shouldn't put that in there. Well, and even too, I think about with with real estate, like as I, you know, watched the real estate market expand and contract, it was like there were the the little uh, corrugated... what do they call those little those little ads? Like the little like what do they call those little boards? Right, the corrugated boards, right? With like the cork on boards, the exit. You're saying? Not cork boards. It's like the it's not it's not um um uh, it's it what what is that stuff called? Anyways, n- n- not uh, not like box materials, but like it's a little bit stronger. Anyways, mm-hmm. those little like signs that they make, yeah. and they would y- you'd oh, see those getting off the freeway on the. On the, yeah, on the freeways. Make $100,000 a year. Make $100,000. i will show you how it, it's like, oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. So, so, again, there's this common theme. There is. And that's what we're trying to get <laughs> at with this whole podcast. Um, dot and com bubble it burst. gets the best of everybody, too. Yeah. Because even experts are looking at this and going, this is, you know, hey, this yeah. is a place you can yeah. go. You can put your money here. And you got to <sighs> do your own work to really start asking yourself these questions. Yeah. And yep. and have a, a strategy that maybe it's going to take longer. Maybe it's a teeny bit yeah. slower. Yeah. But, uh, you know, Aesop's fable about the tortoise and the hare. Tortoise and the hare. Okay. This is the classic. We. Bite you in the we, ass I story. Know. It will bite you in the ass. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we have, that, turtle will, that turtle will eventually catch you and bite you in the ass. We have Gordon Ramsay <laughs> handing it to you. Uh, this yes. one, they're biting it. They're biting it. It's a real common theme. There, there's a common theme here. So. I love this, man. I'm so excited for uh, for for the some of the next, um, and and I guess this is kind of fun too because it's easy. It's like we look at the historics and it's easy to laugh at history, right? Because it's it, 2020, right? Hindsight's 2020. Yeah. Uh, but I'm excited for this. I love this idea. So, so so moving forward, everybody look out for gold. Look out for real estate. Gold. Crypto. Real estate. Even crypto. we may even do one on the meme stocks, and then we're gonna have a big wrap yeah. up. Yeah, and maybe can maybe we do meme and cannabis as maybe one. I like cannabis. Right. We'll, everybody was, we'll do one on the, the everybody was high tulip on craze in the Netherlands in the 1700s. Right? No, that's actually a, kind we of really where should. We, we, this began. We need to incorporate that. Yeah, I, kind of yeah, exactly. Kind right. of where these markets began. The tulip craze. Oh man! You know the you need to get some craze. tulip bulbs. People are going crazy for these things. Crazy! If you don't have tulip bulbs, <laughs> you're not gonna be cool. They started to see flyers on their doorstep. <laughs> what's this story about these the, tulip bulbs what's this tulip bulb i don't know we need to be involved i don't have a dutch accent so i don't know how to do that <laughs> I, I know I've where are these accent. tulip bulbs <laughs> what are the tulip bulbs is that dutch <laughs> and everybody signing off the podcast now. <laughs> <laughs> and you can follow us my you, prosper you, team you, dot com <laughs> you can oh, go to and man. subscribe anywhere on apple tie and rye dot com as well tie and rye that's right go and follow okay. us youtube all right, I think we're done, Ty. I think we've covered this well enough. Dot com bubble. Yeah. I love it, buddy. Yeah. Great Coming work. up soon. Great work. All the other ones. Everybody follow. Okay. Ty, appreciate your time. Have yeah, a bud. great nice day. Work. See ya. See you, man. Hey, thanks for listening to the Ty and Rye, the Finance Guys podcast today. If you like what you heard, go ahead and hit subscribe. That way you won't miss any future episodes. Also, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Ty and Rye podcast. 
Also, check us out at myprosperteam.com. Thanks. We will see you next week.